your nervous system wants to, to be like homeostasis right right here and when your anxiety you're like this and so as you're getting better it kind of overswings and that overswing is like that feelings of sadness and stuff but if you see it just kind of comes back eventually but what happens is that people are doing better and then they go this way and then they create a new problem which is oh no i'm depressed if they would have just waited welcome to the channel i have um the queen herself Queen Kaylee, Miss Kaylee, um, she is a part of the mentorship and we're going to be talking about something that I probably get asked multiple times a week, which is the letdown effect. And I felt like it was not okay for me to talk about it um, unless Kaylee was here because she's really, um, ha uh, really broken down the letdown effect in our private community in the Facebook group. Um, if you guys haven't joined, the link is down below. It's absolutely free. There's a bunch of free content. But in this video, we're going to be going a lot deeper into the letdown effect. So with that said, Kaylee, welcome back. It's been, it's been a while. I, I know it's been what, over a year since I- over, over a year since you've been on the channel. And that video is funny because I remember in it, I said, oh, I'm not gonna become a coach. <laughs> and then- <laughs> The whole year, we've just been working behind the scenes as a coach. Yeah, but you're, yeah. you're, you've, been, you've been great. I mean, it's been, it's been amazing having you. And not even just as a coach, I feel like even just as a friend. Um, no, yeah. It's been awesome. It's been amazing. And I think in the video I mentioned, and um, hopefully it was made clear that um, my passion for anxiety um, from myself recovering completely and totally um, and all just the hardship I went through to get there, um, really just helping others with the information they need to, to overcome this once and for all. So working with you, working with the program, um, it's such a dream and I love it. So. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of, you know, this, a lot of people in the mentorship, like credit their recovery to you. They're like, you know, Kaylee, or they joined because of you. Uh, mm -hmm. That's, that's the, I only. never would have thought that video would have had that much of an impact. I just yeah. wanted my story because I, myself, I didn't have my success stories. I wanted others to at least, you know, see that and resonate with me and just to get the feedback that I, that I've had and just to work with everybody has been really great. So. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get into it. Let's let's talk about this letdown effect. Um, so Kaylee, how would you really define this letdown effect? It's something I've been hesitating to talk about, but um, how would you really define the letdown effect? Yeah, so it's something that I came across in my own research and my own journey. So people in the mentorship, they joke with me. I'm like the scientist of, of, the, of all the coaches. Um, I really like learning about the mechanics behind anxiety. Um, and as Sean talks about on his channel, um, in his report that if you downloaded it already in our mentorship, really understanding the, the mechanics behind anxiety is so important because it helps you demystify it, thereby it helps you lose the fear of it. So for me, the letdown effect really helped me understand the emotional part of recovery. Um, and as we talk about in the mentorship and in, in this channel, um, anxiety recovery, while it sounds really simple, it's also hard and it's nuanced because throughout the journey, different things pop up and let down effect is one thing that pop up as well that kind of throws people off. Then we talk about like a setback, for example. Now, as we know, like with anxiety recovery, um, emotions are an important part of it, right? Yes, we experience physical symptoms. Yes, we experience EPDR. Yes, we experience like the thoughts that come with it, but the emotions are also an important part. Um, and all throughout the anxiety journey, the emotional aspect of it, we're going to feel the ups and downs of emotions much more extremely than we would um, prior to falling into the cycle with anxiety, right? But the letdown effect is not just the ups and downs of emotions that you feel like throughout the journey. Letdown effect, when we really see this come into play, is later on in, in your journey, you start making progress. So we often hear from our clients, um, and it's my own experience included, is that I started getting better. And I was getting a lot better. And I was getting my life back. I was doing things normally. My symptoms had died down. But I was feeling really sad emotions. And emotions that I've never felt before, like a really deep sadness. And I was so, at the time, because I didn't have mentorship or have the program or know what was going on with me, I was so confused. So I was like, okay, I'm getting better. My life is back. My anxiety is going away. Why am I feeling like this? Why do I feel so sad? And just, you know, it was, it was confusing for me. And naturally, and I'm sure a lot of you who ask about this, right? Your first thoughts go to, do I have depression? Do, do I have another, you know, um, concern now 
besides anxiety that, that come out of this. So a lot of our clients in the program, for example, turn to like depression as one of the reasons or in their Facebook group that we work with, right? We see that come up a lot. But what's actually happening is that, so to know about the mechanics behind anxiety, um, as we talk about is when we're anxious, right? And when we've activated this fight or flight response, our body um, increases certain, certain stress hormones, right? Adrenaline, noradrenaline, and one of the big culprits, um, as Sean mentions in the channel a lot, is cortisol. So cortisol is actually our body's main stress hormone. Um, it has many different important functions in our body, but one of the main functions that it has is to increase our energy and our mood and our like our not our mood but increase our energy. If you think about it from a survival standpoint, it's meant to protect us, right? So when we're in the fight or flight response we have to fight or flee whatever threat is in front of us, right? Let's say it's a snake or, you know, a dangerous person, right? So our body increases cortisol in our body so that we're able to, you know, have the energy and have the, the motivation, right? To kind of fight or flee from this threat of ours. So when we're in the, in, you know, our nerves are sensitized, essentially, we have more cortisol in our body than what's you know, normally needed right? And it's, it's there at a higher level. So we have, you know, we're always alert. We have, we have more energy, right? And naturally our mood is also increased as well too, because of those the stress hormone cortisol. When we start getting better, those, that cortisol level starts going down, right? And I always relate it to thinking even like, for example, let's say like if you're a coffee drinker, right? In the morning you drink coffee and when you drink your coffee, oh, you feel awake, you feel alert, you feel ready for the day. And then by 12 o'clock or by one o'clock, you have your coffee crash, right? Because a coffee, which is a stimulant, right? Leaves your body and you feel just the energy drain, right? From, from coffee withdrawal. <laughs> so cortisol is in the same thing in your body, but at a much, much bigger level. So, you know, you've been operating with high anxiety, right? So high cortisol in our body, but now you're getting better. But we're getting better and the cortisol is going down. So the same way cortisol like coffee makes you alert, makes you awake, gives you energy. Now it's being you know, taken away and your body's feeling the letdown of that cortisol leaving, right? And a part of that, like I mentioned, your mood and your energy, that's being, you know, the stimulant that's there is making you alert and awake is being taken away. You're going to feel tired. You're going to feel lethargic. You're going to feel, you know, sadness and these emotions at a much stronger level. Um, so it's what happening to you on, on a, you know, a much bigger scale with anxiety recovery, right? And you're going to feel it all throughout because as you're, you're getting better and better, we're all going down and down and down and down back to normal. So you're feeling it at varying degrees, right? Throughout your, um, your recovery journey. So. No, that's exactly it. And like, you know, one of the things that held me back from making that video was because it happens as you start getting better, right? And I remember the exact same thing. I remember... Kaylee, I was at work and I and just going to work seemed like a monumental task for me. And I was like, I can't believe I'm working. But I had that feeling of sadness. And I remember I was even like looking in the mirror and I was like, oh my God, what if I was depressed this whole time? And I just went through this whole thing about it was anxiety because I feel just so sad. And I think a lot of the confusion is because so many people equate anxiety to being high alert, high stress that when they feel like almost like this pendulum swing the other way, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't fit like the idea of what we have with anxiety. And so naturally the consequence is, oh my God, I'm depressed. Oh my God, I'm this. Oh my God, I'm that. Oh my God, it was something, you know, I thought it was bipolar because I was like, how did I go from there to there in such extremes? Oh my God, what if it's, you know? And so it's those what if situations but at that time for me, I was like, I've gone down this rabbit hole for so long. I kind of had that attitude and it worked well for me, which was like, if I am, I am. <laughs> I'm not going to try to fix it. I was the same way, right? It's like, I'm so much better. And then here I am and I'm feeling so sad and so tired of like, what's going on with me? And like you mentioned, it's like back and forth, right? Because like anxiety recovery, anxiety recovery is not linear. So sometimes anxiety is stronger and lower even day, day to day. So thing. And um, like you, I think because I had to fend for myself a little bit, yeah. I obviously like, it took me a bit longer to snap out of it. Like, if I had the mentorship or I had the program or this community, I would have known what it was and then really quickly know how to address it. 
I think for myself for like a week or so, I did start to get, start to worry about it and start to think about what, what is this? Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, I recognize that, Hey, like I knew my anxiety strategies and tools I had to use and I applied it to that. And then a few months later, I think I said, well, on the article about it and I'm like oh my gosh where was this article <laughs> go now it makes so much sense right yeah I always knew I always knew it existed and I always saw when I was helping people before you joined the mentorship I know they would experience it so I knew it was the phenomenon that existed I just never knew there was a term for it but I knew it was there and so when you came in you're like Sean this is a letdown effect and I was like oh okay and then you like kind of broke it down and um yeah, it's pretty amazing, right? Like, it was just like, oh, okay, this now this makes sense. And it just tells you, like, even though, didn't it feel like so personal for you and like feel like, oh my God, this is so weird. And yet there's like a phenomenon for it that almost everyone on their journey goes through. Yeah, that's that's the thing about, about it, right? And I think yeah. in our membership, we really see that because people join and they have all these unique situations and then yeah. they join, everybody's experiencing it. We've all gone through it. We actually have explanations for everything and experience with everything, right? And we, we can take the knowledge and apply it to what, what you're going through, through our own experiences. And, and it's just, it's crazy. But it's like, it's also a, a good sign too, because it shows like what you're going through. is not something abnormal. Nothing's wrong with you, right? There's something going on in our body, right? We, we go even more scientific we want. There's tons of science behind it, right? But you only need that to recover. As long as you know that's what's happening to you, it's normal. And here's how you handle it. That's, that's the key to recovery. Exactly. Exactly. So what are some, I guess, for the people watching, what are some of the things you would have them do? Uh, what kind of tips or recommendations would you give them if they're, you know, uh, experiencing letdown, what to do really? What would you say? Yeah. So letdown, um, like, you know, like we always talk about the letdown effect ties into emotions, right? So, and emotions go under our anxiety umbrella. So like the thoughts, like your physical symptoms, like um, the DPDR that you may be experiencing, um, the effect and the emotions are no different, right? You're treating it the exact same way as the other symptoms, which means you are letting it be there, right? If you think about it, I always give this example um, when working with clients is that, so let's say for example, you're, you're experiencing that effect and you feel really, really sad, and you just feel lethargic and sad. Um, if you were to respond by worrying about it, wondering why you're sad, what if it's this, what if it's that, right? What you're doing is you're adding more sadness and more worry to feelings of sadness yeah. and wondering why am I feeling so sad, right? So to break that cycle, this is what you know our entire mentorship's about and in your book, for example, right? Is how we break that cycle. And that's simply by letting it be there, right? The sadness is temporary. The sadness will pass. The letdown effect will pass, but you have to let it pass, right? And that means you know you're accepting it, you're letting it be there, and you're going what you're doing as normally as possible, right? Bring the sadness with you, right? Acknowledge it, accept it, and bring it with you. And you'll see that like anything else with anxiety, it will pass, right? So exactly. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's, it's always a good idea to decouple. What happens is people feel the sadness and then they sabotage themselves by feeling sorry for themselves and adding more sadness. So there's the sadness that you feel from the letdown, which is part of the recovery journey. It's like going through the terrain of recovery. It's not like saying, oh, I'm trying to climb this mountain of recovery, but I don't want to climb the rocks. It's like, it's just part of it. You have to go through it. And, but you know, if you're adding sadness on top of that, and that typically happens when people don't know what's happening and they start feeling sorry and they start, you know, um, you know, just feeling sorry for themselves and, and things that aren't really productive in the recovery journey. Yeah. They add them. But if you can just let the sadness be there without adding of your own, then, you know, it just, it's just a phase that, you know, goes out on its own. But, you know, it, it can be really scary if people don't really know what's happening. And these are the things of like, and this is the thing, Kaylee, I'm sure you, you know, too. It's like different stages are different obstacles, you know? It's pretty wild, right? It's just like, you know, somebody comes in for one thing and then like later on it's a letdown effect. And then, you know, there's so many different stages through recovery. It really is like peeling an onion. It's like, you know, just like this gradual process. Yeah, and that's why recovery is 
you know, we talk about in this panel acceptance and it sounds so simple like yeah accept it but it's it, it can be complicated it could be hard right because first of all acceptance in itself is a hard skill and it's yeah. a habit that you're breaking but also recovery is so like i mentioned in the video so nuanced there's so many little tiny pieces throughout that change different you know which, you know, when our body physiologically changing within us as we're going through the recovery journey and no one talks about it, right? You know, yeah. Claire Cash talk about it. She did a really great job, but there's so many, you know, she wrote her book, what, over 50 years ago, mm-hmm. 60 years ago. Yeah. So there's stuff now that really, unless you've gone through it and you've experienced it, um, it's hard for people to talk about right about online, right? Like even the letdown effect, if you Google it, you're going to see let down effect, but it's used in a different context, which also applies to anxiety, but it's, it's used differently. But it's the same thing happening in our body. Um, just we, we understand it from an anxiety standpoint, right? So. right? Yeah. And like, even even with a book, how could you write all this in a book too? That's what I've always been like. There's so many nuances. It's just like even writing a full book on it. I mean, it would just be so... Um, I, I don't know. I, 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 I just don't see... Yeah, go ahead. Get a textbook on it, you know, like a full yeah, textbook. Yeah, maybe like a textbook, yeah. But then that doesn't like, yeah, you know, maybe for clinicians, but, um, you know, for people struggling, yeah, it, it's it's pretty nuts. And so um, I totally agree with the letdown effect. I think that's, uh, I'm, <laughs> I think you did a much better job explaining it than me. <laughs> and I like, like the word, right? The letdown, right? Yeah. Words all comes down, right? Mm-hmm. So your mood and your energy, it comes down, yeah. right? But, it balances back. That's the thing. Like our body wants to get back to normal. I see this in my video, I, you know, from a year and a half ago, right? Our body wants to get back to normal and it will get back to normal. We have to let it get back to normal. Yeah. Never constantly interfering by worrying, stressing, you know, trying to figure stuff out. You're not giving your body the time and the opportunity to heal. You're adding more stress and more worry. Exactly. Right? I look at the letdown effect kind of like a pendulum, right? Like, like if uh, this is a random example, but let's say like your nervous system wants to, to be like homeostasis, right? Right here. And when you're anxiety, you're like this. And so as you're getting better, it kind of overswings. And that overswing is like that feelings of sadness and stuff. But if you see, it just kind of comes back eventually. But what happens is that people are doing better and then they go this way and then they create a new problem, which is, oh no, I'm depressed. If they would have just waited, it would have just balanced itself out and come back. Right. And then like a pendulum, if you're smacking it and moving it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what's going to go back and forth even more, right? Which is what you're doing when you're stressing, worrying, not accepting, right? That's what you're doing to it. You're touching that pendulum and making it swing. You just leave it alone. Let it be, right? Live your life. It will go back to, to baseline. And that's, I think that's the hardest thing in that recovery is people want to control it. They want to fix it. They want to get better, right? It's uncomfortable. But, um, you know, it's, you can't do that with anxiety. It's so counterintuitive. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree. Kaylee, this was great. I mean, I'm, I'm so glad you joined the channel. And, uh, you know, I'm so lucky to uh, just have you on the team, just like everybody else. You know, I think. Oh, no. you know, Thank you. I'm lucky. I'm so ha- happy that, you know, we met, we worked together, and then we yeah people um recover and just get their life back right this is not a life sentence this is temporary and short if you have the right guidance and right steps so right right yeah yeah no that's exactly it and i think uh, i think i think we just have such an awesome team uh you america caesar you know heather shiv everybody i mean it's just a good solid team and uh it, you know it's you know what more can i ask for so uh you're, you're a huge part of it. And uh, I know I may be like, kind of like the face of it, but you know, you guys have so much on your shoulders and you guys carry so much of the weight. And, uh, you know, sometimes like you guys, I feel like you guys operate in silence a bit. And so, you know, I try to use these opportunities to give you credit where it's due. So oh, of course, I'm always welcome. Uh, I'm welcome. I'm always happy to come back on the channel whenever, whenever need be. I'm sure. I'm sure people would love for you, Merka. I think the next one should be you and Merka. Um, yeah, I think yeah. we have that in talks and yeah, we yeah. lost somewhere. <laughs> we'll we'll figure it out. 
We'll figure it out. On the, on the team. <laughs> All right. And so for everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to be part of the mentorship, I'll put a link down below. Um, you get to work with the team, me, Kaylee, Mirka, Caesar, Shiv, Heather, all of us. And so um, if you're interested, you hit the link down below. When you hit the link, you'll watch a short video. It'll really show you how the mentorship works, our approach, what kind of results we get, followed by a time and an application. And then we'll have a strategy session just to see if, uh, you know, it's a good fit. And uh, if so, Kaylee, myself, and the rest of the team will, will guide you ourselves. And you don't have to figure this out anymore. So uh, Kaylee, thanks again for joining. And I'll see you guys in the next one.